The most recent update for Solaris may be a little bit polarizing to some people where, well, let's put it this way, influence has been made the way of the Dodo in most places and has been replaced with Unity. Still though, uh, Unity by itself has been lifted up to a position where it can compete with science. Science builds are still completely viable, but the real question is, there's a couple of decisions at the start of the game that makes you choose between science or whether or not you're going down the unity line and i'm specifically talking about the choices that you have to make early on in regards of how many science ships are you going to send out because as the game progresses you can of course hire leaders but leaders are now locked behind the uh unity modifier it costs 200 unity in order to get a scientist however if you don't go for that, you have your other option, and that is, of course, going for a tradition. Now, traditions by themselves can be super powerful in certain ways, but what if we don't need to make this choice? I would like to point out this comment that I found in one of my previous videos regarding the rather interesting idea of not running any scientists at all. In order to do this, we're actually going to do a couple of things here in order to make this possible. We have a hundred alloys right off the get-go, which means we're going to build a science ship straight away. Now we'll get to our point very shortly. Also get uh, set up a science. Quantum theory is always good. Uh, planetary unification at the start is not necessarily good because of the unity bonus that we can get out of it, but eco simulation and let's get another science on top of that. Now these scientists will be starting to beaver away at our science and they will last like 42 months, 44 months, 38 months, or something along those lines. But the real question is, do we need that? Well, right now we're over here in Seoul. Alpha Centauri is next door. There's a nice size 16 planet over there. So we're just going to go ahead and start doing some surveying in that general direction. But it does mean that this entire area of Bernard Star cannot be surveyed unless we get another scientist to man our upcoming science ship. And that science ship is, of course, now being generated in our shipyard queue. Now, instead... There is something else that we could do. We could wait for the amount of science to tick up and just have this uh, science ship sit around in the meantime and just not do anything, which would objectively be a waste. Or we could do something else. We could actually reassign some of our scientists to the ships. And what I'm talking about here is, for instance, this, this fine uh, person over here who's doing physics research. Now, immediately the game will start to panic. It will give you a pop-up saying, hey, there's no scientists attached to this here research. Nobody is working on anything here. But we still have a minus 25 modifier here, which means that the science will still grow. It will, la it will take a significantly longer amount of time. Right now it's 116 months, but it will still grow. And in all honesty, 25% is not the end of the world. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our science ship out and just start surveying amongst the stars and see if we can actually find something nearby. Because what's really important to realize when it comes to our leaders and our scientists is that they also go up in level. So every single time that they will level up, uh, they will get themselves an additional bonus to say research speed, survey speed, archaeology skill, etc. And this can be modified through various ways, obviously. What we're also going to do is we're going to downgrade our uh, ship over here and actually just upgrade everything so that we can get more alloys in our pool. This won't take particularly long as soon as we upgrade that is. And uh, essentially, this will give us the amount of alloys needed to build at least one more science ship because, of course, we will want to make sure that we can actually have the resources to expand now as you will see we will start getting all of these events popping up here this is the first one in alpha centauri this is our first scientist and they will start doing things here starting to figure out what's going on there but they will gain experience yes experience that can be incredibly useful as our next scientist has come off the production line we'll slap in our next scientist from our researcher pool there once again in order to start surveying around us now something has just popped up which is probably the most important thing within the game and that is our very first tradition 
Uh, now, there is a little bit of an argument out there saying you can go for two major options here. You could go for expansion because of the courier network, which would reduce uh, empire sp sprawl from both systems and colonies. If you are a wide empire, this is a very good way to go because it will effectively reduce any cost that we have on our empire sprawl. As soon as we go over 50, we will start seeing uh, modifications to that with things like science increases, etc. However, personally, I feel that the Discovery is so much better than it used to be, and that's for one reason only. And if we look at our adoption effects, it says unlocks edicts, maps the stars, as well as anomaly research speed increases by 20%. Those two modifiers right there unlock one thing, as I already mentioned, map the stars, which we can easily fit in our edict fund. So we're going to go enable that, which means that all over the place, we will start to find more anomalies for our scientists to survey. Which is great. Sure, uh, our scientists are now occupied somewhere else, obviously. They're on our science ships and not in our uh, technology pool. But still, overall, we have the ability to get more Unity as well as more other stuff. So we can, for instance, get more Unity now and instantly we get another modifier. We can add to boldly go to that. So uh, putting our science ships out there in the general world basically means that we can get more unity and more resources in general, whilst at the same time also increasing the amount of um, experience that our scientists are picking up through the way. Now, my theory is, or at least what I think could be a good idea, and obviously we'll need to do a little bit more testing for that, is that the malice that we're getting at the moment from not having any scientists attached to our actual science, and even though the game is completely losing its crap, um, it's actually not the end of the world, especially not that early in the game. Sure, if we would spawn next to, say, a fanatic purifier or something along those lines, we would be boned because we would need to science in order to uh, be able to compete. However, because we have three science ships up and running one year into the game, it means that we can get more resources. We could get 1,200 mineral right off the get-go here, or we could go for a plus five modifier and basically say, hey, I would like some more minerals in the long run, which in general is usually the way to go. But yeah, all of our scientists are just sitting around here. There is an unnatural structure below the toxic service. We're just going to skip this for now because it is a very hard one. But in the meantime, we're just able to go through all of these things, like science division, which allows us to get more leader cap on our scientists, which will make them better in the long run. We will be able to get more research out and being able to have a better idea of what is going on in the grander world of Stellaris and what's going on all around us. In this way, we can focus on both exploration as well as focusing on unity at the same time, again, whilst the game is screaming at us saying we do not have any scientists attached to our projects. And as soon as we hit, say, 10 years or we have our first tree done, then we can start attaching those scientists back to their respective categories and then hire those new, those new scientists that we need on our ships. So we're five years in now. We now have the ability to get our first Ascension perk. And the choices here are relatively clear. Because of the boosts in Unity, going for one vision is probably the best choice within the game. It used to be technological ascendancy because of the additional bonus that we could get. But because uh, Unity is such an important resource as of the latest patch, going for one vision, for me, is pretty much the number one pick that you should go for in any situation. But now that we have our first tree done, we have a reasonable amount of unity production ready to go. It also means that we can start transferring our scientists back into our pool, such as this uh, person that we put on there early on and the scientists can now move back we can assign a leader because we have the resources available and we can actually put something useful in there like meticulous in combination with say the uh, joys of map the stars it means that we can start finding more anomalies all over the place to increase our resource generation on a galactic scale so yeah here you go um we will have uh, a reasonable amount of unity income uh, we can study this stuff from before or crack the egg. That's always fun, of course. We're just going to go ahead and crack that egg and get rid of that. And maybe we'll get something cool out of it. But still, uh, having these scientists all over the place, uh, like we have this um, here, maniacal researcher. Always put your maniacal researchers on social for psionic, of course. 
if we can uh, they're on a research mission right now so we'll just actually swap that one over to this one so we'll just do this and this science ship will automatically not have a leader on it it's not the end of the world because we get archaeologist which is great for us they'll be at level one not the end of the world and then we can start uh, queuing up more science missions for them to partake in but yeah, uh, now we have a fleet of scientists out there. We have a solid, solid unity pool already being filled up slowly but steadily. We have our first tradition tree already done. And as soon as we're ready with our final scientist over here, uh, who is currently surveying something, we'll be ready to essentially be done with our startup. Essentially, what, we lo what we're looking at here is a tiny lag of about five years where we're just not doing any core science. And we'll have a difference of around 30 to 50 percent in terms of science but all of these scientists are now leveled because they went out to the stars to learn more things and in addition to that they have the opportunity to learn special skills as well and in combination with map the stars which we got by picking discovery first and not getting another leader we are just finding more and more anomalies all over the place so what do you think is this a strategy that would be viable for you for your gameplay style or are you more thinking about mm, i don't really need to do this i just need to focus on science in general and have just one science ship or two science ships out there without really focusing on our traditions at the start of the game it's a really important choice that you have to make at, right at the get-go um it's it's something that you will really need to think of in order to see if this is viable or not but you know honestly five years of delayed science at the start of the game i don't think is going to be the end of the world comparatively to what you can get out of it improve scientists having a better idea of what's going on in the galaxy around you having a good idea of what direction you want to expand into because you know where all the strategic resources are at the early game knowing where the choke nodes are i think the wealth of information that you can get out of those initial scientists while also going for those traditions really weighs up against having your initial scientists applied to your actual research stuff. So yeah, give it a bit of thought. And what do you think? Do you think this is viable? I will see it in the comments below because I'm really curious about what you think. Thank you so much for watching. I want to thank my patrons for making this video possible. And in the meantime, give it a bit of thought. And I'll see you next time on this channel. My name is Ben Aceback. And until next time, take good care of yourselves. And as always, keep your thinking hats on, because the game may throw weird meta things in your general direction.